Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be testing out the Ally ROG Pro Flow 13 and compare it to the M3 Pro MacBook Performance. So we are going to be taking a look off battery tests on battery test, the Tomb Raider benchmark. And I will say that probably in perhaps my last week, I still do enjoy sitting on the portability devices. This, of course, was edited on the M3 Pro with an external microphone. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, trying to put some more production quality into my YouTube by including calls to action like this. Perhaps maybe I could do this uh, more as a hobby. Now, taking a look at Tomb Raider, you get 90 frames per second running off battery. And there was some things I will say that um, on this ROG flow, after updating all the drivers compared to my previous test, I think that it runs pretty well off battery, setting up my computer and moving the three pound device so that I could plug it into a uh, AC adapter is what the move is here. And after getting some background sponsorship from Starbucks and of course having the portrait mode, we'll do the reads test again on the benchmark with the charger attached and just some notes to call out for some people is that interestingly on some tests or initially it was 60 frames per second and so after various tweaks looking at armory crate unplugging replugging i was finally able to get the results that i expected which would be faster frames per second compared to when on battery and this involves getting almost 104 frames per second compared to what I was showing off battery, which was 70 frames per second, a uh, max of 138, but a min of 86 with an average of 109. So pretty good CPU usage when plugged in and getting more wattage. Little call out for a casual YouTuber as myself. I'm actually recording this while on a standing desk elliptical. I recommend you guys get that, uh, but yeah. Going back to the ROG Flow, this was tested off battery on Cyberpunk. And all this to say of what I wanted to show when I was editing this yesterday on the uh, exercise bike is that there's a lot of configurations you could do to try to get different settings. The gist of what I want to say is maybe giving a shout out to other YouTubers such as Jared or Andrew. Um, there's probably a lot of work being done to get a video down from hours of content recording to just getting it down to maybe 10 minutes um, and I know people just want to see graphs and benchmarks, but I found personally that most people like watching uh, at least some kind of story or narrative, which in this case, I tweak a bunch of settings over and over and over again to try and see what frame rates and better stuff could get. Basically, the sum it all up is that you could get around 30 frames per second on medium, and if you want to get 60 FPS from my testing, I found that the AMD 7080M, which is the integrated card on this device, needs to be or cyberpunk actually needs to be set on low and some different settings for the dynamic resolution to hit a target of 120 and you'll get an average of 66 fps and whew, if i sound winded i'm still doing the elliptical and going back to my previous youtube and i just downloaded this from youtube i don't actually save any of my old videos sorry for the bad quality you'll notice that on this setting when i ran the benchmark at medium settings instead of low that is how the m3 pro with crossovers or whiskey this was an older version running 1.0 gets 63 frames per second so something to consider there if you are um you know our mac gaming on reddit is um people want to game on mac there's there's quite a few people who subreddit there so that's something to consider and I'll say for Batman, with these settings set all too low, and for some reason you have to hit backspace in order to apply. Um, you know, in my testing, you get around 40 frames per second, and even here I bump it up to normal to see what the performance is, and you get around you know 60 FPS as well. Again, for testing purposes and really focusing on the ROG. Um, you get around, you know, 40 frames per second, which is actually similar to what you got on the M3 Pro. Um, but I think that there was less jittery or shader pop in, which is a setting or a problem issue you'll always get with the M3 Pros because there is no shader caching. 
Um, so just in my opinion from my gameplay subjectively uh, I did find that it was, what, what I'll basically <laughs> just I'll say is I do find it more enjoyable at least or playable when playing on a Windows machine and this 7080M is a three pound device that performs pretty well and has long lasting battery you can see off battery the power draw which is integrated so I believe that CPU and GPU is going to have around uh, 30 watts off battery and around 50 on battery so the last thing I end up testing is spider-man this one is done off battery and we take a look at how it performs so by default what I had run it at originally was on high settings and you could get around 40 frames per second I'd say stable if you wanted to play at 60 frames per second you would have to bump these settings down to 45 and we could see the fan speed GPU speed of the fans so it is slightly more audible than I'd say the M3 Pro and actually compared to the M3 Pro I'd say this this game is probably the one that runs the best in my opinion you know um for some reason other games it's just a game by game performance and tweaks with ultimately using wine as the translation layer uh so just something to consider and then maybe something that people if you're considering buying this device is this thing does have a eGPU capability so this particular model doesn't have an integrated graphics card and i was just showing the performance if you wanted a lightweight ultrabook that i picked up for 8.99 at best buy and whoo this ellipticals work but i'll say surprisingly like the tomb raider perhaps some tweaks when going on battery off battery that is something people would say from apple fanboys compared to windows just some bugs or tweaks that you know with the m3 devices or to even m1 m2 they run basically at the same speed on or off camera or on and off battery so it doesn't matter when you're plugged in or not plugged in you're gonna get the same performance with the m3 max is offering a high power mode which i believe does allow for more sustained performance and better output and since i actually have the devices and have this game installed on both i figured i would compare them both at the same time instead of just showing an old youtube video um, so here i actually reached the same exact spot which i believe is the top of the empire's state, state building maybe i don't know my geography new york city skyline we can see here one at the top they both seem back basically the same on high medium settings at 50 ish 45 frames per second where of course the m3 pro is utilizing a translation layer to do all of this testing and now um, going to test the MacBook. This is running actually Whiskey 1.1, and there was actually an update today that said like 1.1 plus 01. So I know Crossover is 23.7 just released. You may, maybe I'll do a couple more tests before I decide which laptop to keep or which to return. One thing I do want to point out in this particular video is that the speakers are way better on the M3 Pro. Jumping around, you even see sometimes the frames, depending on the draw distance, could get up to 80 frames per second, which is something I did not see on the ROG Ally, where this M3 Pro is able to handle this game exceptionally well, in my opinion, on high settings. Finally, if we pivot back over to the ROG Ally, which is plugged in, I did, of course, earlier show that you get similar performance on or off battery just like you would on a macbook with the rog able to have a little bit better performance sometimes if you go to turbo but here swinging around it's around the 40 to 45 which you get 60 going to medium but unlike the m3 pro i never saw it like with low uh drawing distance ever get up to 80 frames per second like i was just showing so the m3 pros m3 maxes are very powerful devices that if maybe more work is done or maybe windows comes out with boot camp or something crazy where there's no translation layer you may see these macbooks becoming comfortable devices in the end um, i'll be doing some testing and need to really decide which device i'm going to keep take to australia or maybe i just return both and get the m3 max we'll find out